unless you live under a rock or watch Fox News, the stock market took a huge shit on Monday. No, seriously. A lot of news outlets are signaling a recession is on the rise. Even before then, the week of March the 2nd, the stock market went up and down like Trump's tweets at 5 in the morning. Articles are advising people not to invest right now, and the price of oil per barrel is less than buying the drum that it comes in, or a bucket of chicken from KFC. The question here is, how much blame are Republicans and Trumpers going to place on Trump's administration and his policies? The answer, absolutely none. However, I bet you if Obama were in office right now, the right would be blaming this all on him and failed Democratic policies. Or that the spread of the coronavirus is God's wrath for allowing the gays to marry. Do you hear any of this? Nope. Why? Because the GOP only cares about blaming the bad thing on scapegoats when it's convenient for their power grabs. Just like how you hear the economy under Obama was terrible, yet they never consider that he reversed a global economic catastrophe. No. Don't give him credit for that, but attack Obama for slow economic growth afterwards. Are we going to hear about how Trump's budget cuts acts the executive branch team responsible for coordinating a response to a pandemic and failed to replace it? On top of that, they cut funding for the CDC, which in turn made the CDC cancel its efforts to help countries prevent infectious disease threats from becoming epidemics. High five for budget saving mechanisms. While we all contract a virus that will destroy all the economy growth from years past, this is something that can be directly tied to Trump and his administration. I can admit, it isn't fair to pin the economic problems happening with a random health crisis to a president because they have no control over the initial outbreak or the failure of the oil market. However, we can pin things like their response to the problem and how they task their administration to handle it on Trump. While Trump's administration is requesting billions of dollars to help fight the coronavirus, it may have not been needed had the original budget cuts not made it, it had not been made in the first place. Had we not cut funding to those programs, it is possible the economic cost of its spread may not be where it is today. I thought the GOP was all about smart investing. Turns out their short-term plans end up costing American taxpayers more money and lives down the road. Therefore, when people cite the economy as an administration's biggest accomplishment, I roll my eyes. One president's economy might have just been lucky enough to dodge a war, a huge health crisis, the falling out of trade deals, and whatever else. Shit happens. The problem with the stock market right now goes to show you that it's based upon feels and isn't really a valid measurement of anything. Sure, I can have all the confidence tomorrow that the United States will grow 10% in GDP, but that doesn't mean it will. It's like prayer. Shit in one hand and pray in the other. Let me know which one fills up fast. Will this hurt Trump come election time? Nah, because it's based will either come up with some stupid conspiracy that China released the virus to hurt Trump's re-election, or they will give a good faith interpretation of the events that happened and correctly attribute the economic conditions to being outside the control of an administration. Is the stock market crash, the price of oil, and the initial spread of the coronavirus Trump's fault? No, not entirely. Some of his past decisions have led to the overall increased rate of change of these events, but to place the blame solely on him is unfair. The market and the economy rest on some flimsy factors, and confidence is one of the biggest, which is why I don't particularly pay attention to it. Because no matter how hard we try to foster its growth, we are only one catastrophic event away from hitting rock bottom. I mean, even the market needs a safe safe space from time to time, which is why it had to be shut down. But what is even more frustrating is how Trump's administration is floating tax cuts to help soften the blow of this. Trump said that they're looking at cutting payroll taxes specifically. Why does this matter? Well, payroll tax is fun, many of the major programs that are meant to help people in times of economic insecurity. Programs like Social Security, Medicare, and unemployment. These programs are meant to bridge the gap when times are rough. Cutting payroll taxes seem like it puts more money in the individual's pocket, but in reality, they lose money as well. A lot of these taxes are also matched by their employer. This means another portion of revenue for those programs is also cut. Republican logic. When the need for social programs may be at its highest, 
we should cut taxes that fund those programs. On top of that, Trump has also floated the idea of federal assistance to oil companies hit by the war between Russia and Saudi Arabia. They want to provide low-interest loans to those companies hit the hardest. One of the biggest profit-making industries in our nation needs government assistance? Trump's answer to the free market is to use government resources to help save an industry that we should have already been divesting in. I guess it's okay to need big government money when it comes to things corporations profit off of, but not in healthcare or helping foster an economic downturn towards renewable energy. Here's a thought. If we had already invested and switched our infrastructure more towards renewable energy, this price war with oil wouldn't be affecting our markets as much. But whatever, as long as we prop up the industries they deem valuable, because they're making billions in profits off of destroying the environment, then it's fine. Just like how the trade war with China hit har farmers hard, and we offered them even more money, even though that industry is already heavily subsidized. When are people going to understand that the GOP is not the party of helping the common worker? Uh, labor. Where's wages? Wages are here. Wages. Come in. Wages here. What do you want? Here. What's this? It's the amount of latinum I'm willing to transfer into your private account. You'll just end this strike. Are we talking about slips, strips, or bars? Slips. All right, strips. It wouldn't matter if it were bars. I'm not going to end a strike unless you meet our demands. Well, we shouldn't be fighting. We're brothers. Not when it comes to business. We're nothing but an employer and employee. You've said so yourself wrong no you weren't rob can we talk about this there's only one thing i have to say to you workers of the world unite that they don't give a shit about the worker beyond the fact that they come in and trade their labor for wages they don't care about your health as long as they can reap every penny out of your pocket the GOP doesn't care about you unless it has to do with guns. The issue of guns allows the GOP to control people's lives with the illusion that owning a gun will keep you free. Newsflash, you're not free. Can you shoot the effective marketing and advertising with a gun? What about subliminal messaging and grooming or misinformation? True freedom lies in having the most complete and factually correct information available. Information is the weapon of an educated society. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this talk. Uh, just uh, like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys around. Thanks.